Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Um, this is for the Windows Phone 7 Mango. This is the eighth tutorial video that I'll be doing for Dispatcher Timer. Uh, I'm sorry if my voice sounds a little different this time. I've been changing headsets and it's all a bit of a nightmare. But we'll just have to see how it goes. Um, so anyway, uh, I'm going to show you how to use a Dispatcher Timer. Uh, I do actually use these in some of the games that I've released for the countdowns and obviously to work out how long they've been playing for if it's a timed sort of game. So what I'm going to show you how to do here is I'm going to show you how to actually use a dispatch timer to just make a, a stopwatch really, um, you know, a start and stop. So first things first is we're going to make a new application. I'm just going to call mine dispatcher timer example or X just for short. And for this we're not really going to need much. Um, maybe just, you know, change the title to stopwatch. Um, and then we're just going to chuck in a text block into the middle of the page, um, make it quite wide, quite tall in case we want to make I don't know, a big number. Um, I'm going to clear that out for now, center it, and make it about, I don't know, 48. Let's see, let's see what kind of size that gives us. Oh, that was quite, quite um, unexciting really. Okay. So anyway, we'll just leave it like that, and we'll just call it. We'll leave it as text block as well, not to complicate things. So what we're going to do is, first of all, we need to add dispatcher timer uh, into the constructor. So first thing we do is we're going to write dispatcher. Oh, it's trying to give me the name of it. <laughs> um, dispatcher timer, and then call it dispatcher timer. <laughs> I'm going to give it a capital, and then equals new. Funnily enough, it's dispatcher timer again, really. Um, okay, and I'm going to take that out of there. And then all we're going to do is use the little box that we normally do to add the uh, Windows threading. So I mean, you could add that first if you wanted to. It would make typing it a lot easier. But I'm just showing you as if you weren't typing in or the using things because sometimes they can be a pain. Um, okay, so that's the first thing we're going to do. Um, and then in the initialize, um, all we're going to do in here is we're going to write the name of what we just made which is dispatcher timer and then we're going to do the intervals first of all we're going to set um, how often we're going to how often it's going to tick should we say um, and I'm going to set this one to um, one second so the, la the last one is milliseconds and the ones before is a second and you can get the rest um, so then what we need to do now is we need to tell it where it's going to be ticking so this is going to be um, what event can what um what event we're going to be using? So we need to do an event. Oh, event handler. Okay, so we're going to call our little um uh, thing that we're making. We're going to call a let's call it dispatcher timer and just call it unstore tick because this is what some of the examples can give you and if you've seen it before, it might make more sense. So that's basically that for now. Uh, then what we're going to do is we're going to do private void on this and we're going to do dispatcher timer and this is going to be the underscore tick and then we need to just pass through the object sender and then event argument there you go cool um, that's not the right bracket so there we go um, it's pretty much that simple so now all we have to do is decide what's going to happen inside this box so maybe what we should have done as well is add a button um, let's just uh, find a button first just there, and maybe we'll make the same button um, start and stop it so we can kind of start and then if it's already running then we can we can stop it um, I'm going to do this just kind of quite simple for now what we're going to do is we're just going to have a number um, up here we're going to add an integer I'm just going to do int we're just going to call it number at the moment uh, let's, let's start number at zero actually just to make things easier Sorry, I'm not wide awake at the moment. It's quite, it's quite late. Um, okay, well, it's not actually late at all. It's seven o'clock. Um, really poor excuse. So what we're going to do is we're going to do number. Uh, we're going to do. We'll just do equals number um, plus one. Okay, uh, and then we're going to just update our text block. So our text block is going to then change its text to the number. And obviously we got converted to a string because at the moment it was a number. Um, there we go. That's it. That's literally it. So when we first click the button, um, what we're going to want it to do 
is we're just going to want it to do dispatcher timer start okay and that will start our timer for us and what happens is when it click when it says to start it will then start ticking every second and every second it will get the number that was up here start at a zero add one to it display it so every second it's just going to keep adding on to our number and effectively making us a stopwatch without the milliseconds um, so yeah I mean we can just run that and check it's going to work uh, I didn't open the emulator before this could take a second um, yeah the next tutorial I'm thinking of doing is using um, the tasks um, use one of the tasks with the image chooser so that you'll be able to let the user um, select one of their own images on their mobile in case you wanted to make some sort of drawing app you wanted to make a doodling kind of thing it's nice to play around with some of the tasks okay so here's our, um, here's our application so I'm just going to click the start button and there you go it just starts counting now what we should have done is set the um, text block to start as zero so that when we press the button it didn't just go from a blank to a one it would have gone zero one um, yeah so what we want to do now is we want to make it so that you can press the button and stop the timer really. Um, the one can just do this um, with a boolean for now and we're just going to call it um, timer and then we'll start it as we'll start it as false um, and then we'll just do if timer is equal to false then we're going to start it oh my mistake um, and if it isn't then we'll go crazy and do this so when it starts what we'll do here then is we'll set timer equal to true so once if the timer is at false and we press the button then it will start the ticking and that will set our timer boolean to true and if it's true um, it will then next time we press the button it will see that it isn't false it will go to true check down the bottom what we want to do here is just stop the dispatch timer but we have to change timer back to false again so that when we press the button it will continue to count so there we go let's just try that I hope I didn't say that too quick because I did start to confuse myself so here we go our, our little counter we press it and it stopped and if we press it again it will just keep counting and then we can stop it and start it and stop and start and there we go so we can try and confuse it but it's not it's not working um, I hope I said that clear enough I'll just run through it a second time we have a boolean which is just true or false and if we click on the button it checks if the button if um, the boolean is set to false and if it is then we'll start our timer but when we start our timer we'll also change the boolean to true so that next time we press the button if the timer isn't false it's going to go to the else part of the statement and it's going to stop the timer for us and change it back to false so the next time we click it it can start again I hope that wasn't too confusing but if it was, just write a little comment to say you're confusing me or, or tweet me. Uh, I have actually now got Twitter. Um, I do believe it's student win dev. So it's student W-I-N-D-E-V. Yeah, D-E-V. Um, so that's my Twitter. So you can start tweeting me now um, if you have any questions or if you have anything you want to say. If there's anything in particular you want me to do a tutorial on, then feel free to get in contact however you like. Um, I have actually just released my... Um, so for Windows Phone application, so if you've got a Windows Phone yourself, um, then you can use my application to see my latest tutorials on there and actually watch them on your mobile. So that, that's pretty cool. Um, but for now, um, that's it really. Um, I hope that was helpful for anyone who wants to use a dispatch timer. Um, like I said, my next video, I want to try and use the, uh, the tasks of Windows Phone. I'm going to use the image chooser and it will let you kind of use the, all of the photos that are in the user's, um, user's mobile. So you can use them for very different things, uh, like uploading or, I don't know, whatever you, whatever you choose to do with it. But that'll be the next tutorial, guys. Um, thanks for listening to me ramble. I hope this video comes out okay with this new headset, and uh, I'll speak to you next time.